On Share Talk today, we have John Peters, who is the Managing Director of Strategic Minerals PLC, ticker of SML listed on the AIM stock market. How are you today, sir? I'm um, well, thanks, Steve, um, and thank you for having me on uh, your show for the first time. Thank you very much, and it's our pleasure. So, as it's our first time with you on Share Talk, would you give some insight as to the background of Strategic Minerals with an overview of your projects and your company's strategy? Yeah, look, um, Steve, I think uh, we're a fairly unique uh, player for a small minnow miner on, um, on AIM in that um, we actually have a producing asset. We've got um, some, a brownfield site and we've got a greenfield site that we're looking to progress. So, as I said to you at the start, we've got um, a mag uh, uh, what it is is a magnetite stockpile in uh, New Mexico, out of which we uh, glean cash flows. And uh, we recently announced that we added another major client, which virtually doubled the amount of cash flow we're getting out from that particular one, uh, which of course puts us in a very unique situation in that we uh, actually don't have a burn rate at the moment. We've actually got a surplus rate, which is something nice for a, a miner. It means we don't have to raise money to keep the lights on or do the working capital. We basically only raise money when we want to invest it in a, into an asset, hopefully, that will produce an even better result for our shareholders. And we do that by then going into the next sort of project, which is our, um, say, our Brownfields project, which we recently acquired, which is a 50% stake into a tin tungsten mine in Cornwall. Um, which we want to drill. The money that we're putting in goes in for drilling, so again, to improve the asset. Uh, we're a 50-50 joint venturer there with another company which is listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, NAE, New Age Exploration, um, and which is a good fit for us. Um, firstly, we actually have a chairman in common, um, but more particular, our skills are more based around some of the strategies, some of the structuring, some of the um, corporate actions, um, where their skill is more on the actual direct geology. So as a team, we actually make quite a good team. And we're really looking to try and bring that project along. Uh, I will just I'll highlight that that's a tin tungsten project as opposed to Wolf, which is a tungsten tin project. Um, so we've got more of our, our, in, our uh, asset in that tin range, which has been doing particularly well while the tungsten price has sort of meandered around. Um, and then thirdly, we have um, a, uh, we have uh, 20, uh, 23 tenements in Western Australia, which were perspective for nickel sulphide and for rare earths and possibly even gold. Um, and that's a complete greenfield site. Uh, we bought in quite cheaply there, we believe, and um, have been have actually done, run one drill program, which has shown us that there's some nickel sulphide around. Uh, and it now requires us to move to the next stage and um, we're getting ready to do that at the moment. So as our company, if you like our company, the way I like to think of it is uh, we've been able to, to do uh, two nice M&A uh, projects in this, what I would like to think is a trough of the resources period uh, and we have a cash flow that allows us to hold on to that, improve it with the raisings and then wait until the market then re-rates us. So, just to summarise, you've got a underflow of money coming in from your projects that are operating in New Mexico in America. You've got mm -hmm. projects that are under development in Australia with obviously a wider access. And yep. then you've got the Redmore Tin and Tungsten project in Cornwall. Now you touched on there that there's a resurgence obviously in the markets and what stands out for a lot of companies recently is tin. So what makes this project in particular stand out for the board? Look, the truth of fact is we actually made this call on tin uh, in January of this year. Uh, tin and both nickel, and both of those have done quite well price-wise uh, over the last six months or so. Um, and that was why we wanted to get exposed to them. Now, 
what we like about this project, um, one, it's a brownfield site, so we're not going somewhere we, you know, the history of mining, tin mining in um, in Cornwall. As I as I said, sort of in our preamble, I said, well, the Poldark effect um, has been very interesting within the uh, British press. But basically, we know there's tin there. We've got definitions. We've got older drillings. We need to update those. We need now to also then use uh, modern techniques to be able to drill underground, um, probably more pointed underground mining, more mechanical, uh, going deeper than before. All those things will pro produce us uh, some very good material. And then we have to look at how we go about uh, processing that material. But we're aiming at doing, um, at first spending the money that's been raised, etc predominantly to do a drilling exercise to get us to a part where we can then turn around and examine what the best mining approach is and move to a pre-feasibility stage. Now, with the New Age Exploration Limited, you're looking to advance the project and acquire up to 50% of that as per your RNS that was released this morning. Can you mm -hmm. tell me what work they've done on the project to date yeah they they had worked uh, very closely with srk uh which who are welsh based welsh based um and geologists and they they've actually re-looked at all the seams they've modeled all the seams they've um clearly identified where i think they had up to about 40 possible holes we're honing that down to about 20 uh, we'll probably do it in a couple of phases so that um uh, we can actually glean some information first out of the first few holes before then redirecting our drilling process afterwards. So they've done quite a large amount of work in getting ready for the for the next drill program. We've come along and said, right, okay, well, we'll, we'll provide you the money to do that. We'll take up 50%. And in a way, our money's going in, but it's being used to improve our own assets. So we're reasonably happy that that's a good good financial transaction for us as well as a you know a good strategic transaction with the broader sector having quite a number of fundraisings why do you believe that your shares were significantly oversubscribed yeah look um we you know you start you start these sort of processes and it might be six weeks out we started planning to actually raise these funds and we were going to come to the market for four hundred thousand. And the reason why we only 400,000 is the fact that um, we, early in the year, we um, I announced that we did a rail uh, settlement of a rail claim we had, and that's going to produce ink, uh, money into the company, cash flow into the company. Um, and we're very much of the view that we don't want to over -dilute, dilute our shareholders. We've got some good long-term shareholders. We want to look after them. And so we don't want to dilute where we don't have to. So what we did is we went out for 400 and we were pleasantly surprised that we got offers of about 1.5 and in the end we only decided to go up to 600 so that people could have a reasonable amount of shares now why i believe we did different to some of the others i think again relates to this idea about the cash flow i think that having this underlying cash flow makes us an extremely attractive purchase knowing that people don't have to go out and raise they don't have to put money in to keep the, the lights on, let us say, um, I think is very attractive. Plus, I think we've done two very good M&A transactions in this last year, and I think that value is just starting to come through. When you have a look at your projects to date then, obviously you've got the underlying one, which has got all the infrastructure in place. Now, um, you've pre-mentioned Wolf Minerals as almost a comparison company to the Redmore Tungsten Tin Project. Mm -hmm. What sort of infrastructure is there in place there? Look, uh, that's a good question. Um, what, we, uh, what, we've, what we've seen, I, I will just differentiate there. We have a predominantly tin, tin project. They've got a predominantly tungsten project. But they've got processing plant that allows for processing of the tin, more of the tin, and actually probably has avenues to absorb some of that. So 
Um, and they're only 40 k's away from us by, by sealed roads. So um, there's obviously potential for us to come to some sort of transaction that provided we define our resource well enough, we start mining it. There is, a, there is potential for us then to go into discussions with Wolf to utilise their, um, their, their existing infrastructure. But that does not mean that we will rule out to building it ourselves if required as well. So when you have a look back through your history, it's been a busy 12 months with the company, acquiring these assets, bringing in more sort of scope to the market. Mm -hmm. So with your new UK director and today's appointment of the resources specialist, SP Angel, what do you see as the company's plans going forward and why should investors be having a look at your stock today? Yeah, I, I look, I think there's been a fairly dramatic change in this company, um, even under my own stewardship, because previously the company had been set up mainly to um, monetarise the, uh, the magnetite stockpile in New Mexico. And that was done at a time when you could do that by uh, taking it by rail to a port. In this case, it was uh, Guaymas in Mexico and then shipping it off to China and selling it in bulk. However, the drop in price in that changed it all. So instead of making this company more of a logistics company, if you like, it's now changed it into one that's become more of a true miner. And to do that, we, we realised we needed a couple of things. One, we've always been on the hunt for the right UK director being, you know, AIM listed. Uh, but the advent of um, the Redmore project as a, a preferred project has meant, made it even more critical. Now, we've been very, very fortunate to pick up Peter Whale. He's already our second largest shareholder, but Peter's brought a real context to us already in what he's done and also is someone whose feet's on the ground there. So we've been very lucky to have that sort of input. Uh, and Pete's, I think Pete's quite having, let us say, we're all having a bit of fun as we go with this. Uh, as we develop it, we want to try and enjoy what we're doing and also bring the value in at the same time. Now, with that change of nature of the company also comes an obvious addition of um, SP Angel. We're now moving to a position where we are predominantly becoming, you know, a resource company rather than a logistics company. And in so doing then, we also want an investor base that reflects that because we don't want surprises for them either. We want them to have the risk profile that they're looking for. And so this move with uh, SP Angel has actually been quite important. And I, the one thing I will also mention, of course, too, is Throughout the history of this uh, company, we've actually had some very good support from Optiva Securities, and they continue to play a major role in this this raising, as they did in our June raising. In relation to raisings, I note from the RNS this morning that it sort of sums up that it's perceived funding requirements until at least quarter four, twenty seventeen. That's obviously a long way off. So how do you perceive your plans going forward in okay, relation so, to that? Yeah, going up on our website, if I can work out how to put it up myself, um, is our uh, our um, the PowerPoint presentation we used in talking to our um, to new investors. Uh, and I like to put once we finish a raise. I like to put them up so that, that information is completely shared with every, all our shareholders. And in that, it actually details the fact that um, we're looking for about 840,000, or we need about 840,000 pound to finish off Redmore. We need about 120,000 pound for drilling, expected drilling over the next year in uh, Hans Camp, our care project. Um, and We've got a settlement from the rail of about uh, 675,000 US, you know, circa 520,000 pound. Um, we originally went out looking for 400,000 pound in this placement. Um, 
ended up taking six, as we said, because of the high demand. But all that provides more than enough funds now to complete those two programs. So what we're really saying to the market is we've been active. We're going to concentrate on moving those projects forward at the moment. At the moment, we don't see any other major projects on the horizon. And we don't expect, therefore, to come back to the market and ask for more money until we know exactly what we want to do to improve those assets and how, how we will then use that, that money directly into projects not to cover working, uh, working capital. That's a good summary and a good roundup of the strategic plan going forward. I've got no more questions for you, John. That's a, a good interview. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. No, that was good. That was fine, man. I, look, I like to be very open with my people as well. You know, um, this is a fairly very transparent uh, compared to most most aim companies. I think we're a very transparent company, <laughs> so um, that's good. Thank you very much, John of Strategic Minerals. Thanks, mate.